The human digestive system is a system of organs and associated glands. It begins with the mouth and ends with the anus and in an uncoiled state it can run up to 8 meters. Mouth It's guarded in the front with lips. The roof of the mouth is called the palate and at the base of the mouth is the tongue. The mouth leads into a common cavity called as the pharynx. It's from here the two tubes, a food tube that is the esophagus as you can see leads into the stomach. There is a provision for another tube that's the respiratory tube, the trachea. Stomach is lying on the left hand side of the abdominal cavity. The stomach leads into the first part of the small intestine that's the duodenum and this highly coiled structure here are the other parts of the small intestine the jejunum and the ileum. The small intestine is about 6 meters in length. The portion visible here highly convoluted is the large intestine which is about 1.5 meters long. It is made up of a cecum, a colon, a rectum which opens out through the anus. Let's get back to the mouth and see what are the mechanisms that aid in digestion. Inside our mouth we have in an adult 32 teeth. The human teeth are diphidont and heterodont. What do you understand by the word diphidont? Diphidont means we have two sets of teeth in our lifetime. The temporary teeth, the deciduous teeth in children up to the age of 9 and then the permanent teeth in adults. Heterodont, that means we have four types of teeth, the incisors, the canines, the premolars and the molar. You can have a look at the glands present in the mouth. The salivary glands are of three pairs, parotid, sublingual and submandibular. As the name suggests, parotid glands lie below the ear, sublingual below the tongue and submandibular below the lower jaw. The salivary glands secrete saliva, a highly alkaline fluid containing a lot of water and salts and ions of sodium, bicarbonate and more importantly it contains an enzyme which is amylase, salivary amylase or tylen. Now the teeth break down the food mechanically that is we chew the food. Once the food is chewed it is mixed with saliva. Only the digestion of carbohydrates is initiated in the mouth. Tylen converts the polysaccharides into a disaccharide that is starch converted into maltose which is a disaccharide. Then with the help of the tongue the food is rolled into a bolus. It passes through the esophagus aided by a wave like motion called as the peristaltic motion. Esophagus is 25 centimeters in length and at the point of joining the stomach there is a cardiac splinter which aids the passage of food into the stomach. In the stomach the food is subjected to the action of yet another juice the gastric juice secreted by the gastric glands. Hydrochloric acid is also present in the stomach. It plays a very vital role. It destroys the bacteria. It softens the fibrous content of food. And remember the stomach is a muscular bag. It churns up the food. Maximum time is spent in the stomach for the food to be mixed up by the gastric juice must be wondering what are the food items that would be digested in the stomach. Well, the digestion of the proteins begins and this is brought about by pepsin. Pepsin is not present in the form of pepsin. It is in an inactive form that is pepsinogen. It's hydrochloric acid that converts inactive pepsinogen 
into active pepsin. It acts on proteins, converts them, partially digests them to proteases and peptides. No digestion of carbohydrate, not even the one that was initiated in the mouth is carried on in the stomach. This semi-digested food from the stomach is called as the chyme. It passes through the pyloric spinter, enters into the duodenum. Well, duodenum is a very important point for the digestion of food. You can see a huge gland, the liver, 1.4 kgs. It secretes the bile juice. Bile juice contains no enzymes, but it has a vital role to play. The bile duct carries the bile juice to the duodenum. Now bile has a function of emulsifying fats. Must be wondering what's emulsification of fats. It's something like the action of detergents. The fat globules which are so big are broken down into smaller molecules of fat to provide greater surface area for enzymes to act on them. In the loop between the stomach and the duodenum, there is a leaf-shaped gland called as the pancreas, yet another vital gland associated with the digestive system. From the pancreas is secreted a juice called as the pancreatic juice carried by the pancreatic duct to the duodenum. Now, pancreatic juice contains three enzymes, trypsin, amylase, and lipase. Trypsin acts further on the proteins. The digestion of proteins have to be completed by the juices present here. Proteins are digested into their final products and that is amino acids. And then we have amylase, the digestion which of carbohydrates which was not complete in the mouth is now accomplished in the duodenum. Amylase acts on carbohydrates which are of different types and finally it has to be converted into glucose. What about lipase? Well, lipase has a very important role. It acts on the fats, converts them into fatty acids and glycerol. Yet, it may be possible many of the food items are not yet digested. They are still in the complex form. So there is yet another juice that is the intestinal juice secreted by the small intestine which acts on proteins, carbohydrates and fats. Now acting upon the proteins could be the dipeptidases, carboxypeptidases and finally the proteins have to be converted into amino acids. We have enzymes like lactase, maltase, sucrase that act on different forms of carbohydrates like lactose, maltose, sucrose and convert it eventually into glucose. And further after this digestion has been completed in the small intestines there is a very important function to be performed. On the walls of the small intestine are present finger-like projections called as the villi which absorb the end products of digestion. What is the role then of these large intestines? The large intestine absorbs excess of water back to the body. The undigested, unassimilated food is to be thrown out from our body in the form of feces. It travels all the way through the parts of the large intestine collects in the rectum and it is thrown out through the anus.